All right, so let's take a look back at UFC Vegas 76 from this past weekend. Main event, Sean Strickland, Abbas Magomedov. Sean Strickland, second round TKO, got the finish. First finish in a little while. He lost the first round. He came back in the second round, dominated. He looked dominant. This was a nice finish for Strickland, a nice fight for him. This is probably his best fight in a little while. Good look for him. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he got the eye poke in the first round. It really, really ticked him off. Really thought from there he wanted to press forward. By the end of the first round, Magomedov, he seemed kind of gassed. I don't know if he wasn't up for the challenge, but I mean, being gassed in the first round is kind of no excuse. He threw a lot, but he didn't throw that much. Yeah, I think it's a little bit. He, he kind of blew his load a little early. He... A lot of excitement to start the fight. This is a big fight for him. Uh, yeah, do a agree. lot. Probably had a little bit of an adrenaline dump, and then yeah, got that ice there. on his back and kind of cooled down in the beginning of the second round. And, and well, you gotta you gotta remember too. He started and then stopped for a while from that eye poke and then had to restart again. So I mean, that has to play something into it. Uh, but just all around a nice victory for Strickland. I think we both had him uh, as our picks for the week. So I think we both got that one right. I actually had Strickland as one of my bets for the week, my first bet of the week, uh, Strickland money line. So I got that one right. So it's nice to uh, start start the bets and the picks off uh, with a dub. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, just to remind everybody, with the betting and the picks. So with the picks, we're going to be picking at least the main card every week and just updating everybody at the end of the show on kind of the standings. Um, and for bets, we're going to be doing, depending on the card, a minimum of three bets per week. If there's no fights on that week, we'll figure something out. Um, luckily, I think for like the next two and a half months, we have fights every single weekend, so we don't even have to worry about that right now. Um, but yeah, congrats on winning your first bet of the night. Thank you, thank you. This was probably one of my favorite Dawson performances of his career. Him being a slight underdog here, he really just dominated the entire fight. He, I think he started off two out of three for takedowns in the first round. Once he secured it, he controlled for the rest of the round. And then from the rest of the fight, he just, he took him down and just, and got control. He timed it perfectly. Uh, this was my first bet of the night, so I got my first win. I'm happy about it. What do you have? I, this was actually, I had money on this as well. So this was my second bet of the night. I had Grant Dawson money line. So it was nice to see him come out and get that. Oh, but yeah, he came in and dominated. Pretty much dominated all three rounds. And I believe the, part of my French, but I believe the term is wrestle fuck. And that's kind of what happened tonight. Yeah, but this isn't one of those where it was an uninteresting one. One of the things I'd like to point out is that body triangle. Now, Maybe it's because I'm I'm halfway paying attention most times when they're wrestling, but today specifically, I saw that body triangle switching every single time as Magalov rolled his hips. The body triangle would switch legs, which just gave which just gave Dawson more control overall. Yeah, and you we talked about earlier off uh, off camera, Dawson in a spider IQ. Oh yeah, that, his, just, that just goes to show that his entire TikTok is is based on how he plans on winning with his fighter IQ. That that to me is you know how you have a long career. Exactly. So a nice win by Grant Dawson. Really just came out and dominated. Max Payne Griffin versus Michael Morales, I think was almost destined to be the exact fight it was. Right, I. I personally thought this was going to finish as a Michael Morales TKO, which in the second round it almost did. It was close. Griffin was got heavily rocked. It, and look, no, nothing to say against Griffin at all. His chin is just holding up over time. So, so props to him. But the moral of the story, the heavy favorite, well, I say heavy favorite, minus 250 favorite Michael Morales did win unanimous decision, which I agree with. Yeah, he looked good out there. He uh, close first round, arguably uh, Griffin won the first round. 
But Morales, he got stronger as the fight went on. Like you said, he almost knocked him out. In the second round, uh, Griffin was very wobbled. And then third round, he just continued to lay it on uh, lay it on Griffin. Got a late takedown, takedown even. Uh, I had it three rounds, or two rounds to one. Uh, Mike Morales, 29-28. The judges also had unanimous decisions for Michael Morales. Good. Yeah, I, I had him as unanimous as well, Morales, which... You know, not not to not to scoff at this at all. That moves him to an impressive fifteen and zero. All right. So the next fight, Melissa Gatto, Ariana Lipsky, the only uh, women's fight uh, that we covered tonight. Uh, this was a close fight. It was back and forth, uh, pretty much the whole fight. Uh, I had this two rounds to one, Melissa Gatto. The judges did not agree. It was a split decision win for Ariana Lipsky. Yeah, I'll just say, whatever we say, I guess, really doesn't matter. It's all opinions. But I typically like our opinions. Yeah, I'm usually right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so far, you know, we're, we're batting a pretty good average. But I, I really thought here Gatto was going to, you know, come back off her last decision loss. I thought she was going to you know, rise and, and actually beat Lipsky here. Um, I, I didn't expect Lipsky to win, but I'm not surprised by it, to be honest. Yeah, and I think I think it came down to some takedowns. Um, but yeah, a nice win from Lipsky. Uh, I think we both picked Gatto pre-fight. So I think that's an L for us on that one. Right, it is. I, uh, I picked Gatto, and look, just to point out, one of the things with the judges tonight is significant strikes isn't what won the fight. You know, Gatto had more significant strikes, but Lipsky had more damage. We see judges, they don't see the stats, so they don't have the same stats as us. Right. Yeah, it's... So they really have to go by damage. So that's important to note while, while t you know, taking the, those little punches and, and hitting while you can, you know, making contact is important. Picking your shots are the most important. Agreed. And and uh, to go back to your last point, a lot of times the judges make mistakes and people call them out. Tonight, they were honestly pretty fair. You can't really have any complaints about the judges tonight. So, Ishmael Moretta Bonfim versus Benoit, God of War, St. Denis. I'm halfway upset with this one. I had Ishmael winning. But with the way Benoit went out and just started fighting, it almost flipped me to a fan immediately. It's hard to root against a guy in a fight like that, right? Yeah, it was great. That's why he was my pick uh, for the week. Is my upset pick. It was actually one of my bets, too, so I went to 3-0 and because of this. Oh, uh, nice. He came in, kicked him in the body about 10 times, uh, definitely hurt uh, Bonfim. Got an early takedown. On the ground was way better. And then he slowly just worked his way. Got a submission. Got the choke. I mean, it was... Honestly, you wouldn't know... If you didn't know the odds coming in, you would have thought uh, St. Denis was a heavy favorite. He came in and he kind of just dominated the fight. It only lasted two and a half, three minutes. Uh, for as long as it lasted, St. Denis was the dominant guy. Right, yeah, that that was the biggest upset win of the night as well, as far as odds are concerned. I think I had it at plus 255, would you have it as? Yeah, I won it at plus 260. Nice, yeah, so biggest upset of the night, and that was on the main card. So that just kind of goes to show you that anybody can win on any given night. All right, now for the first main card fight, we have Bruno the Hulk Ferreira. Versus Nursultan Black Ruzaboev. Now, this fight's kind of weird. What do you think about it? So, both these guys coming in, uh, their last few fights have all been first-round finishes. Uh, Hulk, he came in. I think this is his second UFC fight. For Black, this was his first UFC fight. He's fought something like 47 fights before this pro fight. It's crazy. And he's 29. 29. He, uh, 
comes in. This dude is six four six five compared to the Hulk, which who was five ten. So it was a huge, huge reach advantage. It's like a David versus Goliath type situation in the ring today. Damn near. Even the commentators said uh, these are two opposite body types. Short, compact, long, lanky. And in this fight, long, lanky came out, pieced him up. He had a big right hand. Uh, made made Bruno. He almost slammed on the ground. It looked like he hit his head on the back of the ground. And then a couple shots on the ground. Uh, an impressive, impressive first round knockout from Black. Uh, Want to know in the UFC, that's a guy, I don't know if in, at that height and that reach, I don't know anybody that is going to be uh, dying to fight him. Right, and while everybody loves a knockout, one of my favorite things from this fight was he was actually my heavy, quote, quote, heavy underdog pick of the week. So I actually had Rizaboa by money line. So moves me up to two out of three for the week. Nice. I think I didn't have a bet on this fight, but I think I picked Hulk. Uh, but it's one of those ones with the way the knockout went, I'm all right with losing it. So listen, originally when we were previewing this card, one of the biggest names to catch our eyes was Kevin Lee. And we thought this was this was possibly the chance for him to, you know, make his big resurgence comeback. He's still only like thirty years old. Right. Look, underdog odds plus 172 coming in. Kevin Lee fought Renat the Gladiator Fakhradinov. I mean, a hell of a fight to come back to the UFC because Renat, he's a fucking killer. No, he, he absolutely is. And, and what Kevin Lee was trying to come back from was fighting a 40-year-old Diego Sanchez who he had to take the decision. Now... That's not to say anything about the ability that Kevin Lee has or anything like that. A lot of times, Kevin Lee's problem was just his, his, his gas, his lungs, right? What happened in this fight? Well, he didn't have to worry about his lungs in this fight. Uh, from the start, Kevin Lee looked like he didn't be- I don't want to be mean, but he looked like he didn't belong back in the UFC. Renat came in, he dominated him. Cole, Kevin Lee looked overwhelmed. I like to say, he got hit so hard on the knockdown, it looked like he got knocked out and woke back up when he hit the ground. So he almost got knocked down and submission in the same fight. Uh, tough, tough fight for, for Kevin Lee. On the other hand, the Gladiator, he looked amazing. Yeah, look, I don't know. I'm not the one to say it ever. But maybe this is the time to just hang it up for Kevin Lee. You're still, you know, young. You can do other things. You can do great things. I don't know. I'd love to see you fight again. I, I see your potential, you know, being tremendous. But maybe it's just not the right career. 